Around half a year ago, I installed Alpine Linux, and I don't think I've looked back since. It's been an amazing Linux distribution, and it's probably my favorite to date. And so this video is going to be similar to my Void Linux video that I did a few years ago, in that I'm just going to go over some of the, like the basic differences, the basic and more in-depth differences that Alpine Linux has from other Linux, Linux distributions. And so I'll go ahead and start with probably the most important difference, and that is sudo. Now most Linux distributions have sudo installed by default, and if you use most Linux distributions out there, you're probably like it's probably muscle muscle memory at this point to type in sudo before some uh, specific commands. Well, on Alpine Linux, sudo doesn't exist. I think you can install it, but it's not the default, and you probably shouldn't install it. Instead, Alpine Linux ships with do as, and do as is basically just a simpler and leaner and more secure alternative to sudo, because sudo is actually it's actually quite a bloated and big program, um, and the only thing it, the only thing it does, or the mo only thing that most people use it for, is just to run programs as root, and so do as just uh, it does the same exact thing, but with less code, and it's more secure. In fact, it's a, a do as is actually, I'm pretty sure, a default on OpenBSD, which is the most secure operating system on the planet. So I'm pretty sure, so it goes to show that the people at Alpine very much take security in, into consideration. So uh, do as is the default um, um, program to escalate, escalate permissions in Linux. So next I want to cover APK, which is which stands for Alpine Package Keeper, and it's essentially, um, as the name suggests, the, Al the package manager for Alpine. And uh, compared to other package managers, it, uh, APK is probably my favorite because it is so lightweight and so quick. Um, most packages that I install, it usually takes about one second to install them. Even with a even with like not the fastest internet connection, it's very quick. And for even for larger packages like the Linux kernel or web browsers, it'll take like probably 20 seconds max or 20 30 seconds max to install a package like that. And so it is very very fast and very minimal. And so I'm just going to go ahead and go over some of the basics of it. So in in order to actually install a package, you use apk add, which just as the name implies, adds a package to your system. And so if I go ahead and install, let's say, uh, FCF, and then put in my password, you'll see that it took basically one second to install it. Uh, pretty quick. And to delete a package, all you have to do is just say apk delete, or del, and it'll go ahead and remove all that, the package and its dependencies automatically. Another important command for APK is APK fix. And what fix, what fix does is it doesn't uninstall and reinstall a program. It actually keeps the program on your system, um, but it actually fix and reconfigures the program if there is any reconfigurations. So for example, grub, I can do APK fix grub, and that will go ahead and uh, reconfigure grub and install the bootloader onto my computer. And I'm not going to run that right now because I don't want to reinstall my bootloader. But take my word for it that it does reconfigure and, you know, uh, reconfigure programs to install in your system. So next, I want, uh, all right, ne next is APK update. And this is, doesn't, this APK update does not actually update your system. But what it does is it just updates your package lists. To the most up-to-date package lists, and basically just to you know get the version numbers and all the information up to date. And usually this is paired with APK upgrade. And what upgrade does is it actually updates your system or upgrades it and installs the newest versions of packages. So for example, uh, this is uh, this version is or uh, APK upgrade is upgrading the Linux kernel right here as well as grub and grub EFI, um, my bootloader. And so if I can go ahead and, uh, it'll go ahead and upgrade all that. And 
As you can see, it's actually not taking that long. It's actually very, very quick. Um, which I mean, goes to show how uh, how small and fast APK is. And it should finish it about right. I should finish it about right now. There we go. And so my system just got updated. I have a new Linux kernel installed. And that took like maybe 30 seconds. So very, very fast. So next is, um, oh, APK info. And this just gives info on any package. So if I want to say, I want info on FCF, it'll give me, inf it'll give me the description, the URL to the, pa or to the um, homepage, as well as the package size. And another, another one is oh, APK list. And by default, APK list lists all the packages available for Alpine Linux, including ones you don't have installed. And so this will list, I think, probably like the thousands of packages that are available. But if you want to list just installed packages or packages installed in your system, you can do APK list dash dash installed. And I'll go ahead and actually pipe that into less. And it'll give me a list of all the installed packages I have on my system. So that's APK list. Now we can do oh, another, a very interesting one that you don't see in a lot of other package managers is APK dot. And what APK dot does is, this is actually really interesting. I found this out kind of recently is you can give it any program, let's just say um, MPV, and what it will do is it will spit out all this, you know, all this gobble, it looks like gobbledygook, but this is actually information that can be fed into another program, specifically one called Graph GraphViz. It's a graph visual, visualization program. And um, you can pipe that into dot, which is a part of GraphViz. And this will basically, what this, what doing this will do is this, it will basically interpret all this information and spit out, you know, this. But what we can do is we can actually turn that into a PDF. So we can say turn that into a PDF. And so now it's outputting a PDF. We can pipe that, or I'll go ahead and pipe that into my PDF viewer. And you can see that we have this very weird image, but if you actually zoom in, you'll see that this is actually one giant PDF graph. And what this is, is actually a graph, a uh, graph visual, visualization of all the dependencies of MPV. And so this basically allows you to visualize all the dependencies for this one program in case, for example, you want to um, avoid installing a certain dependency or want to track down um, uh, certain dependencies for certain uh, things, and it's very useful for um, yeah, tracking dependencies on your system. And so I think this is a really cool feature of APK that not many people know about, but it's really awesome. And so that's APK dot. Um, next is APK policy, and this will tell you uh, where you can you can find um, a specific package. So if I do APK policy. FCF, you'll see, oh, FCF is available at this, you know, is available from this repository right here, which is the default Alpine Linux repository. But if I do one that's, that I have installed, like NPD, you'll see, oh, I can get it from here, but I can also get it from my local, um, my local uh, APK repository um, on my system. And so that that's a, a useful for, I guess, finding, um, location of certain uh, APK repositories. Next is another very useful one, and that's APK search. And as the name implies, it search, searches for packages. So if I wanna, if I wanna search for, um, let's just say I wanna search for MPV, you know? It'll give every program that has the letters MPV in it or some or MPV in its description. So for example, MPV, as well as a few other ones that don't have MPV in them, but could be related to it somehow. Um, and so this allows you to 
bulk search for packages that you want. And finally, um, APK is APK audit. And APK, what APK audit does is it actually audits your system and essentially tells you all the changes that are basically all the changes that are in your system that are not there by default. And there's all these files, essentially, and all of them have a letter next to it. I think if, I think if we go to the man page for APK policy, let's see, um, or sorry, APK audit, you'll see that you can find out what these letters stand for. So for example, A equals file added, D equals directly added or directory added, and then M, M stands for uh, metadata changed, and et cetera, et cetera. So you can see that I have all of these different files added. Um, I'll run this again. You see I have all these files added, um, different directories added as well. And so uh, this lets you audit your system for any changes, either for security reasons or just to keep track of all your files. And so that's APK, probably my absolute favorite package manager of all time. And next I want to cover BusyBox because unlike most other Linux dis distributions, Alpine Linux does not have the GNU core utilities installed, which are commands like ls, cat, um, tar, and etc. Instead, they have the BusyBox core utilities installed, which um, are way more lightweight and a lot more POSIX, POSIX compliant, which means that they're not, uh, which means that some uh, programs you, you will write in, or shell scripts, shell scripts you can write on one system will probably, will probably run better on another system. And so the, you can access BusyBox core utils by running the respective commands or just by running BusyBox and it'll give you a list of all the BusyBox programs. And there's quite a lot of them. Uh, uh, anything, everything from as simple as cat to something as complex as tar um, is included with BusyBox. And the great thing about BusyBox is, despite the fact it includes all of these numerous commands, is if I go ahead and show you how big the executable is, the executable is only around 800 kilobytes. It's less than one megabyte, which for all of those many commands that I just showed you, that is not a lot of, like that is very small. And that just goes to show how minimal and compact the BusyBox core utils are. And it makes something like, like Alpine Linux uh, su uh, super small and super fast. So lastly, I want to cover OpenRC, which is the init system for Alpine Linux. And OpenRC, it behaves somewhat similar to systemd, but it's a lot more stripped down and a lot easier to understand. So there's really only three major parts or programs for OpenRC. And the first one I want to show you is RC update. And this will, be, this will show you, or running RC update will allow you to add and or remove different services from your system. So for example, um, Let's just say I want to add um, or remove a certain service. So for example, CUPSD, which is my printing service. If I want to not have that start up by default, I can do RC update oh, delete, and I could say cups or CUPSD. If I go ahead and run my password, it'll go ahead and disable that. Um, that service so it won't start at boot. If I want to go ahead and do the opposite, if I want to add a service, I can just say RC update add cups D. And it'll go ahead and add the cup D service, cups D service to uh, run on boot. Next is RC status. And it'll just show you oh, here. It'll actually go ahead and show you on the right side over here the status of all the um, the current status of all the different services you have running. So if something doesn't start correctly or um, fails, it'll go ahead and tell you um, on RC status. And the last one, the last um, program for 
OpenRC is, I think it's RC uh, service. And of course you need to specify a service. So I'll go ahead and, I'll go ahead and do, um, oops. I'll go ahead and cups D. And RC service will allow you to um, immediately start or stop a service, restart it, um, describe it, um, show its status, or kill it altogether. And so if I do, for example, do as RC service, um, and I say cups D, let's just say start. And it'll warn me it's already been started, but if I want to go ahead and stop it, I can just go ahead and stop. And there we go, it'll go ahead and stop cups. And if I want to restart it, it'll restart. go ahead and restart cups. Um, I'm going to go ahead and output the status. It'll just say it started. Um, let's go ahead and have it describe to me uh, what it's doing. So as you can see, it'll print out the description, which there's no description for cups D, the conf uh, uh, how it's checking the config. Uh, it's reloading and killing all the processes in the group. So it'll go ahead and describe what it's doing. And then, so yeah, that is, that is essentially, that is essentially uh, what you need to know about Alpine Linux. The, um, all the amazing parts of Alpine, Duas, APK, um, BusyBox, and OpenRC are, just name a few, are some of the great things that Alpine Linux provides that, um, basically make the system the way it is. And it's, like I said, my favorite Linux distribution and I probably won't find any, I probably won't find anything better than Alpine Linux to be, uh, to be fair. And so that's Alpine Linux. Um, yeah, the best distribution out there. Uh, and I'll see you guys whenever.